Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to start a new topic which is developmental disturbances of oral and paraoral structures. In this topic, I will be explaining about various developmental conditions or anomalies affecting the teeth and surrounding structures. Now based on the structures affected, this topic is divided into six categories that is developmental disturbances affecting teeth, affecting oral mucosa, affecting the tongue, affecting lips and heart palate, affecting the jaws and finally affecting the salivary glands. Under the first category that is developmental disturbances affecting the teeth, we will be learning about the changes in the shape, size, number, growth and structures of the teeth. So in today's lecture, I will be explaining about the developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the teeth. Now let's look into the causes of such developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the teeth. The first and the most important cause is trauma or pressure. Trauma could be, could be because of an external physical force and pressure could be because of internal eruptive forces during the development of the teeth. Second etiole cause is hereditary mutations or mutation which uh, transfer from generation to generation and the last cause is hormonal changes. Hormonal changes is due to endocrine dysfunction. Coming to the variations in the shape of the teeth, there are nine developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the teeth. Those are as follows. Gemination, fusion, concrescence, dilaceration, talons cusps, dense indente, dense evaginatus, torodontism, and supernumerary roots. We'll be studying each of these in detail. So let's start with the first developmental disturbance or condition affecting the shape of the tooth, that is gemination. Let's look into its definition. It's a division of a single tooth germ by invagination resulting in incomplete formation of two teeth. Suppose this is a single tooth germ. This because of invagination, because of external pressure or forces, it tends to divide into incomplete formation of two teeth. There is no complete formation formation of teeth of two teeth over here. As you can see, there is there are two crowns. As you can see over here, there are two crowns, but the root is one. The single tooth germ, because of invaginate invagination, formed into an incomplete two teeth. Okay. Now coming to the clinical features. Both deciduous and permanent dentitions are affected, but it is common in deciduous teeth. And among the anterior and posterior, mostly anteriors are affected more than posteriors. Now, two completely or incompletely separated crowns with one root and single root canal. You should first rule out that it could be gemination. In gemination, you would see two crowns and one root. In gemination, you will never find two roots. If there are two roots, it's not gemination. Now coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the tooth, that is fusion. Now let's look into the definition of fusion. Fusion is a union of two normally separated tooth germs through the dentin. Now over here, there are two normally separated tooth germs growing side by side but they tend to fuse. They tend to fuse through the dentin. Let's look into its cause, causes. It's physical forces or pressure. It's more common in deciduous anterior teeth. And fusion 
is exclusively due to the confluence or merging of dentin of the two normally separated tooth germs. This is a very important point in fusion. Fusion is the, the union of two teeth by dentin. Okay, now coming to the next point in clinical features, it's more common in anteriors than posteriors, same as gemination. Now, there are different stages in the tooth development. One stage is early before calcification and another stage is soon after calcification or soon after a portion of crown has been completed. Now, there are two forms of fusion depending upon different stages of development. If the fusion has occurred early before the calcification of the teeth, then you would find then then you would see a complete fusion of two teeth which is somewhat like this wherein you would see two crowns one root canal you would see a bulky pulp chamber or root canal and if the fusion has occurred after a portion of crown has been completed or after a certain level of calcification has been completed then you would see union of only roots like over here you can clearly see that there is no involvement of pulp chambers pulp chambers are separated from each other unlike here over here the pulp cha chambers of the two teeth have been united or confluent along with the dentin but over here the pulp chambers are separated by dentin it's only the fusion of roots only the fusion of dentin without involving pulp chamber. So these are the two different forms of fusion depending upon their occurrence at different stage of tooth development. Now in fusion you will always find two crowns, two roots that is nothing but two teeth which are attached by dentin. This is very important. Fusion is always, is always a developmental condition which involves in fusion or confluence of two teeth merging of two teeth through the dentin okay now this is a picture of fusion whenever clinically whenever you see a bulky tooth like this with the central crevice first thing we should come to your mind is that it is a developmental disturbance and then you will figure out what developmental disturbances it could be i'll be explaining you how you can clinically differentiate between different developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the teeth in the later part of my lecture now coming to the third developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the teeth that is concrescence let's look into its definition concrescence is defined as a developmental condition in which teeth are united by the deposition of cementum Okay, if you remember, fusion was teeth were united by the uh, by dentin, whereas concrescence is where teeth are united by the deposition of cementum between the teeth after the root formation has been completed. This is very important after the root formation has been completed. Now, coming to the etiology, it's traumatic injury and crowding of teeth with resorption of interdental bone. Coming to its clinical features, is common in maxilla, resulting in fusion of maxillary second and third molars. Whereas the first two developmental disturbances which were affecting the shape of the teeth, that was gemination and fusion. If you remember, they were affecting the anterior teeth first. More than posterior, they were affecting anteriors. Whereas in concrescence, concrescence affects posteriors. Among posteriors, maxillary posteriors more than anteriors. It can occur before or after tooth eruption. In concrescence, you would see two teeth attached by cementum. If you remember, fusion was attachment of two teeth by dentin, whereas concrescence is attachment of two teeth by cementum. A simple explanatory difference between all the previously studied developmental disturbances. Now, if we, rem we remember studying about germination that it is an incomplete formation of two teeth by 
invagination of a single tooth germ okay it's incomplete formation coming to the next developmental disturbance which, which i haven't discussed earlier because it would be difficult for you to understand at that time but now you can understand it clearly this is twinning twinning with the name it suggests it's twin which means that there is another uh, there there is a twin of a teeth present in the oral cavity okay now in uh, in twinning the process is same as gemination okay like single tooth germ it invaginates and gets it gets completely separated okay and it result in formation of two completely dif uh, two completely different teeth unlike gemination where where it was in complete formation of two teeth twinning is complete formation of two teeth so in twinning you would see one would be the normal tooth which was supposed to be there and another another tooth would be a supernumerary tooth an extra tooth okay that is the difference between twinning and gemination that's why we have all, always mentioned that gemination is incomplete formation of two teeth this is very important you should mention this that gemination is incomplete formation of two teeth whereas twinning is complete formation of two teeth okay now coming to fusion as you can see over here these are two normally separated two germs which has been attached together through the dentin okay and then concrescens is again the normally separated two germs are being attached through cementum okay now how do you differentiate between gemination fusion and concrescens clinically okay there are two ways to differentiate between these things clinically and that's the first one is counting the number of teeth as soon as you see a bulky tooth in a clinically as soon as you see a bulky tooth with a central cre crevice your first you should first think of a develop that is a developmental disturbance and then try to figure out which developmental disturbance it could be so first you should count the number of teeth in gemination the number of teeth is normal because obviously it's an incomplete formation of two teeth so the number of teeth are normal in twinning whereas, whereas in twinning you would see a complete formation of two teeth which results in increased number of teeth okay if you count the number of teeth and you find you is that they are increased unusual than normal then you you should rule out that it is twinning coming to fusion as the teeth have been fused it will be there will be re reduction in the number of total number of teeth okay concrescence you cannot rule out clinically you have to rule out radiographically now the next way to differentiate and this is the most easiest way and this is the most uh, this is something which everyone follows is looking at looking for the adjacent teeth in case of gemination the adjacent tooth is present because gemination has got nothing to do with the adjacent tooth it uh, gemination is the result of invagination of a single tooth germ whereas in twinning there would be an extra adjacent teeth because there is one supernumerary teeth okay in fusion as you would see there is an absence of adjacent teeth okay and in concrescence is again present because concrescence is the fusion of two teeth through cementum that is near the root it has done got nothing to do with the crown which you clinically see now in this picture as you can see over here there is a bulky tooth with a central crevice and we know that it is a it, it is a developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the teeth now look at the uh, this look at the adjacent tooth we have a central incisor on one side okay and this could be a central okay if this is a central then what should be on the other side there should be a lateral but over here we have a canine so what do we know with this that this bulky tooth is the fusion of central and lateral which means it is a fusion and not gemination because this adjacent tooth is absent this is the best way to clinically differentiate between gemination and fusion okay and twinning 
Now coming to the fourth developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the tooth that is dilaceration. Dilaceration is defined as an angulation or a sharp bend or curve in the root or crown of a form teeth. Now this is dilaceration. Okay. Now etiology is again the same thing. Trauma at the time of tooth development. And this dilaceration can occur anywhere along the whole length of the tooth or the length of the crown. Depending on how much the crown or root was completed at, at the time of the trauma. Okay, and it is a consideration while, ex uh, while doing the extraction. Now coming to the next developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the teeth is a talons cusp. Talons, let's look into its definition. Talons cusp is an excessive enamel growth. Okay, it's an excessive enamel growth which projects from the cingulum area of permanent incisors. This is very important. Okay. Now, coming to its clinical features, it resembles eagle's talon. Talon is nothing but the claw. This is a claw. This cusp resembles eagle's talon, hence it is named so. It is common in, common in permanent maxillary lateral incisors followed by maxillary central incisors okay and if it's a, uh, associated with maxillary central incisor it is bilateral associated with maxillary laterals is usually unilateral okay it picture is i will draw a small picture for you all for this one okay this is a cingulum area Okay, this is a single area. Over here, it appears as a talon or a small cusp. Okay, and it, this talon's cusp is associated with Rubinstein Tybee syndrome. This is a very important syndrome, and you need to. It's a viva question, it's an important question you all need to remember. Talon's cusp is associated with Rubinstein Tybee syndrome. Now, what is Rubinstein Tybee syndrome? I'll be explaining now. Now, this condition is an autosomal dominant genetic condition. Now, what do you understand by autosomal dominant condition? It means that only single mutant gene is enough to cause an expression of such conditions okay whereas autosomal recessive condition is a condition in which you need a mutant gene from both the parents you need a copy of two mutant genes from your from either of your parents from both of your parents okay only then the condition will be expressed in the patient Whereas in autosomal dominant condition, only a single copy of a mutant gene from one parent is enough for the expression of this condition. Okay, now coming to, let's look into what is Rubinstein Tybee syndrome. It is associated with short stature or short body structure of a patient and moderate to severe intellectual disabilities accompanied with microcephaly, which means short short skull or small skull distinctive facial features broad thumbs and first toes this is very very important in rubens as soon as you hear the word rubenstein tybee syndrome this should hit your mind in patients suffering with this syndrome you would see broad thumbs and first toes over here you can see in the x-ray there are broad thumbs compared to all the other digits of hand the thumbs are broad and even the toes are broad. Okay. So this is associated with Rubinstein Tybee syndrome. Along with it, you will find dental problems and kidney and heart problems. Dental problems we have already discussed. That is uh, the talons cusp. Okay. 
Now coming to the next developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the tooth and that's dense invaginators. It's also known as dense indente or dilated composite odontome. Dense indente means tooth within a tooth. Okay, now why is it named so? I'll be explaining it in the later part of my lecture. Now looks, let's look into the definition of dense invaginators. It is a developmental condition found in teeth where the outer surface of the tooth folds inwards. Now let me dr draw a sagittal section of a tooth with expressions. Dense invaginators. Now, yeah. So this is the tooth showing. This is a sag sagittal section of a tooth showing dense invaginators. As you can see, the outer surface, the outer surface of the tooth, it folds inwards in dense invaginators. As you can see over here, the outer surface of the tooth has folded inwards. Okay, and it's gone closer to the pulp, very close, in very close proximity with the pulp. Okay, this is nothing but dense invaginators. Now, let's look into the etiology of dense invaginators. It is a result of an invagination of enamel epithelium, okay, in the surface of tooth crown before the calcification. If you all remember, suppose this is our advanced bell stage over here yeah suppose this is our advanced bell stage showing the formation of this tooth so what it is saying is it result is an it it is a result of an invagination of the enamel epithelium okay as we all know this over here these cells form the enamel epithelium okay they tend to grow inwards into the, the crown before the calcification occurs okay resulting in dense invaginated few authors believe this and then few authors believe that it is due to increased localized external pressure okay and few authors they believe that it is because of focal growth retardation, okay, focal growth reduction or, okay, and fo focal growth stimulation or excessive focal growth in certain, certain areas. Focal means certain spots in the uh, tooth germ in certain areas of the tooth bud. Now, I'll again draw the diagram of the advanced bell stage. Okay, suppose this is the advanced bell stage. Okay. And over here, our tooth is forming with this deformity. Okay, so now over here, it's because of focal growth retardation. Over here, there's focal growth retardation or decreased growth, whereas internally over here, there is focal growth stimulation that's why it's growing inwards okay so this is what ba it basically means now coming to the clinical features it's common in permanent maxillary laterals okay it's common in permanent incisors whereas if we remember that gemination and fusion the first two developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the teeth they were affecting the deciduous more than permanent uh, teeth and it may involve the maxillary central and is frequently bilateral same as talons cusps if the maxillary centrals are involved in talons cusp is usually bilateral and if it involves maxillary laterals is unilateral the same thing is there in uh, dense indente or dense invaginators it resembles lingual pit after calcification yes lingual pit is the most uh, reduced form or the most underdeveloped form of uh, dense indente 
okay similar invagination can occur on the tooth root and is due to invagination of her thick her twix epithelial root teeth on the root of usually on the roots of laterals we do have a central groove this is what it is talking about it is talking about this on the lateral part of the root it is due to invagination of the hearth pigs epithelial root sheet it is similar to that of dense and dentic now coming to its radiographic features it appears as tooth within a tooth due to a pear shaped invagination from lingual pit approximating to the pulp okay oh, i have previously drawn that diagram again i'll draw that it's a sagittal section of the tooth affected by this okay as you can see the pulp chamber is in close proximity with this tension uh, this thing and it on the radiograph this appears as another tooth this this area appears as another tooth on the radiograph which is present in in the within the tooth that's why it's known as dense and dense tooth within a tooth which is a misnomer it's not actually a tooth within a tooth it's just a depression or inter inwards inward growth on the tooth okay now coming to the next developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the tooth is dense evaginatus it's also known as leong's premolar evaginated odonto or occlusal enamel pearl now let's look into its definition it is defined as a developmental it is a developmental condition that appears clinically as an accessory cusp or a tubercle of enamel or a globule on the occlusal surface of premolars okay let me draw you a diagram okay this is a leong's premolar okay this is what we are talking about okay is an accessory cusp or a tubercle tubercle is a false cusp tubercle of enamel tubercle this name is given whenever there is a cusp extra cusp or a cusp which shouldn't be there but it is uh, an anomaly it is not normal you is unusual than normal okay only then it is named so only then this word is used tubercle so over here it is it's a similar to an extra cusp which shouldn't be there that's why it's known as a tubercle or a globule since it's round in shape is known as a globule on the occlusal surface of the premolars okay now let's look into the etiology it is it is thought to occur because of proliferation of inner enamel epithelium and odontogenic mesenchyme into the enamel organ okay now again i'll draw the diagram of uh, advanced bell stage it will be easy for you to understand this with this suppose this is the premolar growing okay the diagram is not that clear but only for the ease of understanding i'm drawing this diagram over here this whole thing is uh, odontogenic mesenchyme okay this this is dental papilla it will later form into dentin and pulp and over here we have the actual enamel forming ectoderm okay mm. now what does it say it and it consists of inner enamel epithelium right over here there is inner enamel epithelium what does it say it says proliferation of inner enamel epithelium and odontogenic mesenchyme into the enamel organ now this whole thing is your enamel organ okay and this is your odontogenic mesenchyme hmm? now this inner enamel epithelium and odontogenic mesenchyme this these both things will proliferate into the enamel organ 
resulting in formation of a globule a tubercle like this okay as you can see over here clearly this is the outline of the tooth outline of the tooth of the future tooth okay and on this you can see a globule because of proliferation of inner enamel epithelium and odontogenic mesenchyme resulting in eventually formation of such globule or accessory cusp or tubercle of enamel clinically okay now coming to the next developmental disturbances affecting the shape of the tooth is torodontism torodontism means bull tooth now next look into its definition it is defined it's a dental anomaly in which the body of the tooth is enlarged at the expense of roots this is very important it enlarges at the expense of roots let me draw a diagram for you over here this is torodontism wherein the body of the tooth is enlarged at the expense of root as you can see the roots are too short the roots of molar shouldn't be this short but instead they are this short now let's look into the etiology of torodontism torodontism the first thing uh, most of the authors they as they say that it is a retrograde character which means it's nothing but a primitive character or a character which is present in a ancestors okay the second thing few authors believe that it's a primitive pattern it's again something which was seen in our ancestors mendelian recessive trait mendelian it's a theory of uh, transferring the trace from one generation to another generation yeah, and few authors believe that uh, it is an atavistic feature now this atavistic word is this term is coming from the word atavism which means that it's a primitive character it's old which was present in our ancestors which means it is primitive and which has lost over generation and now it is reappearing again that is atavistic feature okay now the fifth, the fifth etiology is mutation few authors believe that it could be due to mutation resulting from odontoblastic deficiency or there is some abnormalities during the dentin formation of the roots okay that's why they result in short roots like this okay so basically what the etiology is that this is a primitive character and that it has it is a recessive trait which can transfer from parent to, to over generations okay its exact cause is still not known we just know authors just know that it is a ancient character which was present in our ancestors and which uh, disappeared in generation and now it's again reappearing not much of it is known now there are few authors who believe that the cause of torodontism is failure of hertwig's epithelial root sheet to invaginate properly it can be divided. the roots of the tooth can get bifurcated or trifurcated nicely if the hertwig epithelial root sheet invaginates properly and if it doesn't then you you wouldn't find trifurcation and bifurcations in the roots now coming to the clinical features it is common in permanent teeth than in deciduous teeth okay torodontism is found in permanent molars okay it can occur unilaterally or unilaterally or bilaterally and it may involve many teeth at a time and it exhibits hereditary tendency as we have already studied that it is a mendelian recessive trait which means it is so it exhibits a hereditary tendency same as this even gemination and fusion even they exhibit hereditary tendency okay and now it is also associated with amelogenesis imperfecta 
Klinefelter syndrome and Down syndrome. Uh, these all are genetic disorders. Now coming to the radiographic features of Toronontism, the teeth appear rectangular in shape. Okay, yeah, of over here, let over here you can see the teeth are more rectangular in shape. Okay, large pulp chambers like these, short roots because we have studied that in Toronontism, the body of the tooth enlarges at the expense of roots. So we have short roots and lack of pulpal constriction. We don't have pulpal constriction at the cervical third area in teeth with affected with toronontism. And it exhibits three forms. There are three forms of toronontism. That is hypotorodontism, mesotorodontism, and hypertorodontism. In hy hypertorodontism is the most severe form of toronontism wherein the bifurcation or the trifurcation of the roots is just near the apex as you can see over here whereas hypotorodontism is the most mild fold of toronontism where you do find a little bit of crown, uh, root length okay and meros mesotorodontism is the with the term meso we can understand it's not that severe nor that mild it's in the middle now coming to the last developmental disturbance affecting the shape of the tooth, it is the supernumerary roots. Supernumerary roots, by the name itself we know that super means increased, numerary means number, increase in the number of roots, which means presence or presence of extra root. Like for example, in teeth like mandibular premolars where you usually find one root in case of supernumerary roots you will find two roots okay like mandibular bicuspid or mandibular cuspids where you are supposed to find one root you will find two roots the etiologies again there is some trauma or pressure during the developmental disturbance of the tooth and this is important and it, it is a consideration for extraction. I hope you all enjoyed this lecture. I hope that it should be of some benefit to you all. In my next lecture, I will be talking about developmental disturbances affecting the size and number of the teeth okay if you like this video please like share and please subscribe to my channel and yeah don't forget to hit the bell icon that will keep you updated with my latest videos thank you so much have a nice